The chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Kalani. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'll be very brief on this particular matter. I rise on behalf of the constituency of Kalani to contribute to the debate on the pro pro protection against violence, Bill 2023. It is well known, Mr. Speaker, that we have a serious crime and violence problem in New Providence. Shootings, stabbings, robberies, break-ins, and killings are all too common on the island where most Bahamians live. An unfortunate subset of this crime and violence problem is violence against girls and violence against women. Last year, for example, <coughs> rape was up 15%. In the first five months of this year, rape was up in New Providence by 64%. We have all read in the newspaper the disturbing stories of the rapes of older women. We have seen other stories of various types of disturbing sexual violence against girls and women. I spent my medical career caring for women. I am aware of the extreme damage done to the victim of violence, including sexual violence. The trauma is, all, is often so deep that victims suffer long-standing psychological and emotional damages. As legislators, we must do all we can to prevent violence against girls and violence against women. It is never acceptable to force another to have sexual relationships with you without their consent. As members of this parliament, we must be on one accord in our positions and utterance on this. We must stand fully against violence including sexual violence against girls and women. And those who engage in such acts should be swiftly arrested, prosecuted, and if convicted, sentenced to proper terms in prison. We should not protect abusers. We should not try to help them get away with crimes. As members of parliament, we must stand with our girls and women against those who do harm. A bill to protect against violence can be supported. But Mr. Speaker, there are some concerns as to the bill somewhat watered down as expressed by um, members of women's organization. And we brought that concern here to Parliament. This should be a moment at which the country becomes more serious about the protection of girls and women. This bill should not be the end of our efforts. When necessary, we should come back here to amend and add more provisions and more resources to protect Bahamian women. Don't get me wrong, now nah, I on your all side. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. I on your all side. I said, I said anything to protect women, everyone should support. However, we have some concerns that more should have been added to it. As mentioned, the bill seeks generally to provide for the protection, I'm speaking about this bill. The bill seeks generally to provide for the protection of and support of victims of violence. It seeks to fulfill the various obligations of the Bahamas under the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, 1981, the CEDAW, and the Inter-American Convention on the Prevention, Punishment, and Eradication of Violence Against Women, 1994. 
The bill seeks to do this by promoting the education and training of all involved in the administration of justice, including police and other law enforcement officers, as well as other personnel responsible for implementing policies for the prevention, punishment, and eradication of violence against women. Providing appropriate specialized services for women who are being subjected to violence through public and private sector agencies, including shelters, counseling services for all family members, where appropriate and care and custody of the affected children. And also, promoting and supporting government, governmental and <laughs> private sector education designed to raise the awareness of the public with respect to the problems of and remedies for violence against women. The bill creates and sets out responsibilities of the Protection Against Violence Commission to ensure international and regional obligations of the country of the country are complied with. The commission is empowered to, as set out in the, what we would term somewhat reduced bill, grant funding for approval and certified community programs or projects of support to service providers. Provide technical assistance in program and project management and information systems to support service providers. Consult coordinate and cooperate with other regional and international violence-based organizations and institutions. I hope when I say anything about Bell, lady, you clap for me again. Okay, that's a deal. <laughs> it sets to engage, <laughs> it sets to engage one or more private health care facilities to conduct medical examinations and provide necessary treatment uh, to victims. Part four of the bill establishes and expressly states the general rights of victims of violence, which includes the right to be treated with compassion and dignity by every person who comes into contact with the victim by virtue of his employment or professional capacity in attending to the victim. The right to be informed of all rights and services available to them under Part 6 of this Act, the right to confidentiality by any person acting in their capacity to provide care or support service, and the right to privacy. The bill sets out how complaints should be handled. Mr. Deputy, for the administration of this bill to work, there needs to be a minister who is insistent on overseeing its functions. Part three of the bill seeks to provide the framework of the administration of this act. Specifically, the minister has responsibility to develop and implement a national strategic plan, strengthen the institutional capacity in response to violence, establish a nonprofit foundation to raise funds for the benefit of the Commission in its functions and implement programs to provide sensitivity training for members of the police force and support service personnel, and generally raise awareness of the public on problems and remedies of violence. Mr. Deputy, it is critical that we improve education in schools across this country as it relates to violence against women. We need to teach our young people throughout their lives that violence against women and girls is unacceptable. Relationships should not be coerced or governed by force. Having comprehensive age-appropriate curricula across the grades could help teach future generations that gender-based violence is inappropriate. And Mr. Deputy, we must also get a hand on the dysfunction of our criminal justice system. Cases take too long to come before our courts. We need to ensure that there are enough police officers 
enough prosecutors, enough judges, courtrooms, and support staff to cause matters to be tried quicker. We especially need dedicated courts to hear matters of alleged <coughs> sexual violence. We need a comprehensive plan from the current administration as to what is needed for our criminal justice system to function more effectively. It is unacceptable, Mr. Deputy, for individuals accused of multiple serious offenses, such as murder and rape, to get bail over and over again because the system cannot try them fast enough. What we need is leadership to find the plan and to cost it out. The Bahamian people are tired of hearing that another rape had happened and the accused was already on bail for one or two or three other alleged rapes. As a deputy, as difficult as it is for them, we must continue to encourage Bahamian women and girls to speak up if they are victims of violence or sexual violence. Seek help to get it to stop. Do not suffer in silence. I am pleased that the police force has created a specialized unit to deal with these matters. Madam Speaker, um, Mr. Deputy, when it comes to protecting uh, girls and women, all would support such movements. However, we still would like to see the complaints by the women organizations addressed in a timely manner and the necessary amendments made to this bill in a timely manner. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Thank you, Honorable Member. As many.